My dear brothers and sisters, let me take this opportunity to welcome you again into this uh, uh, wonderful uh, time. I, today I have a very, very wonderful uh, information and message to share uh, with you. And uh, I, first of all, I want just to say thank you very much for your support. And, and also I'm very much privileged uh, to be alive today because I thank and I know that Heavenly Father has always been, been caring. Uh, in our lives and, and he's always there to 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 ensure that uh, we are okay uh, today i'm actually privileged to share a talk by one of the apostles of the church then and his name his name was uh, elder l tom perry and elder l tom perry gave a very wonderful talk about marriages and why families and marriage really matters in our lives today i know there are so many theories outside there there are people who are advocating against marriage. Some of them will tell you marriage is not necessary. But uh, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, there is something that we know that is very essential and very vital, and that is family and marriage. So uh, please join me. He's giving this talk, uh, which is very elaborate and very interesting. And please just join me so that we can listen to this talk. Welcome. November, I had the privilege of being invited, along with President I Henry B. Iring and Bishop Gerald Cosey, to attend a colloquium on marriage and family at the Vatican in Rome. In attendance were religious representatives from 14 different faiths, from six of the seven continents, all who had been invited to express their beliefs and what was happening to the family in the world today. Pope Francis opened the first session of the assembly with this statement. We now live in a culture of temporary, in which more and more people are simply giving up on marriage as a public commitment. This revolution in manners and morals has often flown the battle, the flag of freedom, but in fact, it has brought spiritual and material devastation to countless human beings, especially to the poor and most vulnerable. It is always they who suffer most. In referring to those of the rising generation, he said, it is important that they do not give up on themselves over the poisonous mentality of temporary but rather be revolutionaries with the courage to seek truth and lasting love going on against the common pattern. This must be done. This was followed by three days of pre presentations and discussions with religious leaders addressing the subject of marriage between a man and a woman. As I listened to the widest imaginable variety of worldwide religious leaders, I heard them agree completely with each other and express support for one another's belief on the sanctity of the institution of marriage and of the importance of families as the basic unit of society. I felt a powerful sense of commonality and unity with them. There were many who saw and expressed this unity, and they did so in a variety of ways. My favorite one was a Muslim scholar from Iran who quoted two paragraphs verbatim of our very own proclamation on the family. <laughs> During the the colloquium, I observed that various faiths and denominations and religions are united on marriage and family. They are also united on values and loyalty and commitment, which are naturally associated with family units. It was remarkable for me to see how marriage and family-centered priorities cut across and superseded political and economical and religious differences. When it came to love of spouse, hope and worries and dreams for children, we are all the same. 
It was marvelous to be in meetings with worldwide presenters as they universally addressed the feelings of the importance of marriage between a man and a woman. Each of their ad addresses was followed by testimonies by other religious leaders. President Henry B. Eyring gave the final testimony of the colloquium. He bore a powerful witness to the beauty and commitment and committed marriage and to our belief in the promised blessings of eternal families. President Eyring's testimony was a fitting benediction to these special three days. Now you may be asked if the majority felt that similarity of family, priorities, and beliefs, if all religious faiths and religions essentially agree on what marriage should be, and if they all agreed on the value that should be placed on home and family relationships, then why are we any different? How does the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints distinguish and differentiate itself from the rest of the world? Here is the answer. While it is wonderful to see and feel that we all have such a common with the rest of the world in the regards to families, only we have the eternal perspective of the restored gospel. What that restored gospel brings to a discussion on marriage and family is so large and so re relevant that it cannot be overstated. We make it a subject of eternity. We take the commitment and the sanctity of marriage to a greater level because our belief and understanding that families go back before this earth was and they will go forward into eternities. This doctrine is taught so simply, powerfully, and beautifully by Ruth Gardner's text of a primary song. Families can be together forever. Pause and just think for a moment about primary children all over the world singing these words in their native tongues at the top of their lungs with enthusiasm and love a family can invoke. Families can be together forever through Heavenly Father's plan. I always want to be with my own family, for the Lord has shown me how I can. The entire theology of the restoration gospel centers on families and on the new and everlasting covenant of marriage. In the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we believe in pre-mortal life, where we all lived as literal spirits, children of God, our eternal Father. We believe that we were and still are members of His family. We believe that marriage and family ties can continue beyond the grave that marriage performed by those who have the proper authority in his temples will continue to be valid in the world to come. Our marriage ceremonies eliminate the words until death do us part and instead say, for time and for all eternity. We also believe that strong fa traditional families are not only the basic unit of a stable society, a stable economy, and a stable culture of values, but that they are also the basic unit of eternity and the kingdom and government of God. <clears throat> we believe that the organization and government of heaven will be built around families and extended families. It is because of our belief that marriage and families are eternal that we as a church want to be leaders and participate in worldwide movements that strengthen them. We know that it is not only those who are actively religious who share common values and priorities of lasting marriages and strong family relationships. 
A great number of secular people have concluded that a commitment to marriage and a family lifestyle is the most sensible, the most economical, and the happiest way to live. No one has ever come up with a more efficient way to raise the next generation than a household of married parents with children. Why should marriage and family matters everywhere? Public opinion show that marriage is still the ideal and the hope among the majority of every age group. Even among the millennial generation, where we hear so much about cho choosing singleness, personal freedom and cohabitation before marriage. The fact is that strong marriages worldwide still want to have children and to create strong families. Once we are married and once we have children, the true commonality among all mankind becomes even more element, evident. As family people, no matter where we live or what our religious beliefs may be, we share the many struggles, the same struggles, the same adjustments, and the same hopes and worries for our children. As a New York Times columnist said, David Brooks said, people are not better off when they're given the maximum personal freedom to do what they want. They are better off when they're enshrouded in commitments that transcend personal choice. Commitments to family, to God, craft, and country. One problem is so much of the media and entertainment that the world shares does not rely on the priorities and values of the majority. For whatever reason, too much of television, movies, music, and internet present the classic case of the minority masquerading as the majority. Immorality and amorality range from graphic violence to recreational sex is portrayed as the norm and can cause those who have mainstream values to feel that they're out of date of a bygone era. In such, the media and internet dominate the world. It has never been harder to raise responsible children and keep marriages and families together. Despite what much of the media and entertainment outlets may suggest, however, and despite the very real decline in marriages and family or orientation of some, the solid majority of mankind still believes that marriage should be between one man and one woman. They believe the fidelity within the marriage and they believe in the marriage vows in sickness and in health till death do us part. We need to remind ourselves once in a while as we re were reminded in Rome of the wonderful reassurance and comforting fact that marriage and family still have the aspiration and ideal, the ideals of most people. That, and that we are not alone in these beliefs. It has never been more of a challenge to find a practical balance between employment, families, and personal needs as it is in our day. As a church, we want to assist all that we can to create and support strong marriages and families. That is why the church is actively participating and provides leadership in various coalitions and ecumenical efforts to strengthen the family. It is why we share our family-focused values in the media and on social media. It is why we share our genealogical and extended family records with all nations. We want our voice to be heard against all of the counter counterfeits and alternate lifestyles that try to place family organizations that God himself established.
We also want our voice to be heard, sustaining the joy and fulfillment that traditional families bring. We must continue to project that voice throughout the world in declaring why marriage and family are so important, why marriage and family really do matter, and why they always will. My brothers and sisters, the restored gospel centers on marriage and families. It all is also on marriage and families that we can unite most with other faiths. It is around marriage and families where we find the greatest commonality with the rest of the world. It is around marriage and families that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has the greatest opportunity to be a light upon the hill. Let me close by bearing my witness. And my nine decades on earth fully qualify me to say this, <laughs> that the older I get, the more I realize that family is the center of life. It is the key to eternal happiness. I give my thanks to my wife, to my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren, to all the cousins and in-laws of an extended family who make my life so rich, yes, even eternal. Of this eternal truth, I bear my strongest and most sacred witness in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That is Elder L. Tom Perry, and uh, he's given us his witness about families and uh, why members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints treasure and river families, and why uh, 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 we are somehow different in family perspective as compared to what other church or other religions may perceive. And um, the, the difference there is mentioned is that uh, uh, we have an eternal perspective of families. Uh, that's why marriages in the temple, when they are performed, they are not performed until death do you part. They are performed for eternities. And, and that is the perspective that most members of, all members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have, which is different from the mainstream uh, churches outside there. And he also uh, gave very wonderful insights about marriages, and he said uh, there is nothing more important than marriages and families. That is the major key, and that is the center of all happiness. And at times, people will want to justify as to why maybe they should not get married, or as to why they should be single, and end up, you know, they end up having counterfeit happiness, which is not actually original happiness. And I like what he said at the end, that uh, he has lived for nine decades. And one thing he's come to realize, that the only thing that can give you happiness in this life, it's your families and marriages. And he's really, you know, uh, he, he's really joyed in, in the families and extended family that he has, because that is the center, a uh, core of happiness and richness in this, in this life. So, my dear brothers and sisters, that is what members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will stand for. And marriage is very, very important among the saints. Marriage is very important among the saints. And that is a marriage between a man and a woman, okay, for the procreation. I know there are so many other marriages nowadays that they are being defined, but what the Lord has defined and what the church has actually defined and approved, it is that one, the marriage between a man and a woman. And uh, he gave also an example that they were in a meeting uh, that is in Rome, and this meeting was chaired by Pope, and they, the church was represented there by President uh, uh, Elder, uh, Elder Henry Bering and, uh, and, El, and Tom and, and him also, who is uh, Elder Elton Perry. And uh, one thing he says that... Uh, when they brought about the topic of marriage, all religions seem to actually agree as to what marriage is and how marriage is very important and it's the key uh, for any growth of any society. So it seems like all the religions ended up agreeing. 
So what he said that there is no difference between what we believe in and what other churches believe in. And that's why people should not actually feel that uh, we members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints are any different with any other church. But the only perspective that we may uh, see it different is that we look at marriage and families on an eternal perspective as compared to what other religions are. And, and, and he spoke a lot of things there, which I would actually like you also to share with me. Uh, please, you can share in the comments down there. Uh, and give us the insights uh, how you feel about this talk. I know what uh, the apostle has said is true, that marriage is ordained of God, and, and members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints uh, revel and treasure marriages and families so much. And that is a marriage between a man and a woman, uh, which is ordained of God. And I know if we do follow that, then Heavenly Father will exalt us, and we will be able to live with him uh, in the last days. And I say this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So as usual, my brothers and sisters, I will always also encourage you to subscribe, please, and hit a thumbs up there as we strive forth even to share these glad tidings. And I will also invite you to share comments or one or two comments on how you feel about the talk that Elder Perry has given. And I will be more than glad to listen from you and uh, be edified uh, from you. Otherwise, thank you very much and have a good day.